Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're ready for the next round of wiring and hopefully in this segment we'll have the output tubes all wired up and be ready to power the amp up and check the bias on our output tubes, make sure that's where we want to see it, see what the B plus is, maybe play around with different rectifier tubes if we need to to get the voltage dialed in and make sure these tubes are happy and then we can finish up the front end wiring, check the bias on this stuff. Might have to play around with that a little bit. On the schematic, it's showing the RC decoupling, like resistor cap network, whatever you want to call that. And a lot of people just use one resistor cap for both tubes. And even when they draw it like it's one channel, it's meant to power both channels. And I'm not sure which way this was drawn. I like using a separate resistor cap for each channel. I feel like not only then are you decoupling the input tubes from the output tubes to make sure it doesn't like get motor boating or get some weird low frequency feedback thing going on, that it decouples the input tubes from each other. So you don't have any kind of crosstalk between them. And I know a lot of commercial amps, they don't do that. They just use one resistor cap for both channels. But I think it helps the sound stage and just the channel separation in general. And it's only one resistor and a cap. It's not, not a big expense to dual rail the front end power supply. So I'm not sure if the resistor and the schematic the value is for one channel or both channels. We'll figure that out when we power this thing up. And we want to get our little bias meter wired up. And yeah, we'll be ready to see what this thing sounds like. So let's get busy working on this wiring and finish the stamp up. Okay, so we got the 283 tube all wired up. And I got enough of the wiring done where I could power up the amp and I could check the bias on the 2A3 tube and make sure all the voltages and all that stuff look good. And we'll go over that in a minute, but let me just show you what we've done since the last video. Okay, this is the wire from the output transformer that goes to the plate of the output tube. So this blue wire connects here, and on this tube over here, it connects there, and then like I said in the last video, these are going to be B+. Plus. So we got this orange wire that runs over here to our B plus output wire that's right here. We've installed this 100 UF 450 volt cap. That's the final stage of the filtering after the 50 ohm resistor. And then this is our remote ground point for this power supply filtering. And so this wire comes up over into our star ground point. And that fixes a ground point down on this end of the amp that we can connect stuff to. So we've got this voltage divider here for the center tap of the 6.3 volt heaters. And so that ground comes up, picks up over there along with the B plus feeds off this terminal. So before I soldered all of this stuff together, I wanted to get the wires run over to the front end tube and figure out how I'm going to lay all that out. And so we have the B plus runs around the meter, which we've got installed, but not wired up. And we come over here and we're going to make this one of our positive terminals. And then it jumps over and this is going to be our other positive terminal. And then the ground comes around from this ground point up around over and around connects to here it's kind of hard to see but there's another little ground wire that comes from this terminal to this terminal then it jumps across to here and then we've got this ground wire here to ground this terminal to here and then eventually 
this is going to be where the signal connects from the volume pot with the shielded wire and I'll show you how all this is going to wire up when we do the front end tube. Basically we're going to have a resistor that goes from this B plus terminal to the plate of the upper tube and then it's going to have a filter cap that goes from here to ground and then on this side this is the cathode it's going to connect to here and then we're going to have the cathode resistor across these two terminals with a cap across that resistor and I set this up the way I did so that we could potentially put a resistor and then an LED across here in series if we want to try that and see what that sounds like. And then finally, off the cathode of the upper tube, we're going to have a wire that runs from here over to here. And then this is going to be where our coupling cap goes between the front end tube to the grid of the output tube. So let's go back over here to our output tube. We have our B plus that comes up over down to here. Then this is our B plus that goes the high voltage side that goes to the output transformer. And then this goes back to the plate. Same thing over on this side. And then this was the ground for these cathode resistors, this center terminal and this one, these connect across this wire. So then we have this connected over here to our star ground point. And so that gets the pathway from the cathode to ground. These are the cathode bypass caps. We're using some pretty high-end audio note bypass caps. We want to make this thing sound as good as we can. We got those on each side. And then on the grid, we also pulled a ground from here over to this terminal on this tag strip. And same thing over here. And then we have our grid leak resistor that goes across there, both sides. And then this is going to be where the coupling cap hooks up. And then this goes over to the grid like that. And that's kind of what we've done in the wiring so far. When I first powered it up with a 5V4G rectifier tube, which is a fairly low drop rectifier. The B plus was a little higher than I wanted to see. It was close to 350 volts, and the output tubes were biased at about 17 and a half, almost 18 watts, and they're supposed to be a 15 watt tube. So that was a little hotter than I wanted to see. So I ended up using a 5Y3 rectifier tube, which dropped the voltage here on the plate of the output tube to 304 volts. And then I've got 44 volts on the cathode of the output tube, which is just a breath over 15 watts. And I know this tube's rated at 15 watts, but everybody I've talked to believes it's really rated a little higher than that. And they will do just fine running at 15 watts. And the previous 2A3 monoblocks had the tubes biased at 15 watts, and it was fine. Never showed any signs of stress. So we're going to start off with that 5Y3 rectifier tube which this is kind of going to be pushing the rating of that tube, but I'm using a nice new old stock made in Japan tube, so don't think we're going to have any issues. So next I need to put some resistors and wire up this front end tube and then connect the shielded wire from the volume control to the grids of the front end tubes and then run this back to the RCA jacks that are going to be back here in the back of the amp. And then finally, I need to wire up the switch to this meter to the output tube cathodes. And then we're going to be able to measure the voltage on the cathode or the output tubes with the switch between the two tubes and then this meter. And they will connect up. I can either connect them here 
or over to this tag strip point right here, which is probably what I'll do. And then this tag strip point right here will be the other cathode and they'll go to each side of the switch and then the center of it will go up to the meter. Then the meter goes to ground and that'll finish up our wiring. So that's where we're at so far. And I'm happy to see the voltages I did like I said, it was a little hotter than I expected. The nice thing is I've been doing some research on the EML 2A3 tubes and even their mesh plated one is rated at 18 watts. And so if I do decide to try some of their tubes, I can put a little hotter rectifier tube back in this position here and bias the amp up, you know, to 16 and a half 17 watts and take advantage of the extra headroom that those tubes have and their solid plate 2a3 tube runs much higher and so we could probably even put a 5ar4 in it and take advantage of the extra power that we'll get from running one of those eml tubes so yeah i think this is headed in a very good direction and this looks like a good place to wrap up this segment. Well, we got a lot done in this episode. We're getting pretty close to almost finishing this thing up. I think with maybe one more segment, we'll be able to get the volume control wired up and the input jacks and all that stuff wired up and be ready to put this thing on the audio analyzer suite and see what kind of performance we get out of it. And then hook it up and take a listen to it. I'm excited to hear what this thing sounds like. Thanks again for hanging in there and watching this video. I'm sure some of you folks are going to be interested in building this little amp. This is a kind of a classic design that's been out on the internet for a while. Heard a lot of people say it sounds really nice. And it's got the option to do that other, I think it's called a simple 2A3 that just uses the triodes in the same tube in parallel instead of the SRPP and who knows in the future may try that anyway just to see what it sounds like versus this SRPP thing and I also laid it out so it'd be easy to go from a capacitor bypass cathode resistor to an LED resistor in series kind of setup where you don't need a capacitor and see what that sounds like. I personally like the way that sounds. I know I have one viewer that built my KT88 deal and they didn't like the LED. And they you know, were very adamant about that the resistor capacitor fixed all the sonic problems they were having when it had the LED in there. And you know, that's the whole thing with DIY is you can try stuff and make it sound the way you want to. You may want to use some different capacitors or different coupling caps or different resistors and stuff to try and see if you can make it better to your ear. And that's the fun of being able to DIY this stuff. So anyway, thanks again to you regular viewers. Thanks to you Patreon supporters. Thanks to you folks that have joined the membership on the YouTube channel. Folks that make donations on our website. Just all the stuff y'all do to support Skunky Designs, especially the YouTube side of it, and make it fun to make these videos for you guys. So, until the next time, have a nice day!